Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. New Year's is usually a time that will catapult you into assessing your life and you really get more motivated to change. And even if you're listening to this in a different month or a different time, there are certain landmarks like anniversaries, birthdays, holidays, job changes, breakups. You know, it's those states of transition when we tend to take a look at our lives and we get motivated to change. The problem is, is that we all have these habits, <laughs> these nasty habits that are difficult to overcome. And, and they're difficult simply because it's what we know. We all fall back into what we're comfortable with. And one of the biggest reasons, and this is what research says, why people don't fulfill their New Year resolutions is because they tend to shoot too high with their expectations right? Like they'll say, okay, in 2019, I'm going to meet my soulmate. Well, yeah, that's awesome. And that's fine and dandy, but that's a lot of pressure, right? To fulfill something that is so big and nebulous. Instead, people who are successful in fulfilling their goals are ones who get really specific on one area to work on, right? It's one area that reaches the bigger goal. So instead of saying, I want the soulmate, what if you stated that you're going to work on getting one to three dates a week for the next three months? Now that's more doable, right? Like chunking it down, it's something to chew on that you can actually be successful in. And if you're more likely to succeed in that, that's actually going to build your confidence to get to the larger goal. And often when I do this with my clients, they forget about the bigger goal even (laughs) after a while because they're so focused on just the small wins because the small wins people do add up to the bigger success. So today I want to really get specific with you and chunk it down and be, help you be more successful in your dating life by helping you all break bad dating habits and addictions. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. If you're sick of not getting results in your dating life, then it's time to break these bad dating habits. All right. I confess, I had a really bad dating habit. I admit it. I, I want to share it with you because it relates to what we're going to dive into today. When I first fell out of divorce, I found myself getting sucked into being the fixer. I was literally addicted to being the fixer. Now, obviously, given what I do for a living, this was such a natural default button of mine, right? It was, I mean, it was what I knew. It was what I lived. It was what I breathed. And it's where, quite honestly, I got my confidence from. And remember, at that time, my confidence was shot. So by being the fixer, that helped me be in my confidence. So I'd find myself getting attracted to broken musicians, man children, emotionally needy men, you name it. And if you were a fly on the wall and you saw me on a date, this is what it would look like. I would kind of be sitting there with these guys and you would have seen me asking them great questions about their lives and them getting really highly attracted to my insight and the attention that I would give them. And in the end, they knew very little about me and my deeper parts of me. Oh, yeah. I mean, they knew about my talents and my skills and, you know, kind of the surfacey stuff, but not the deeper Kim, not the intimate Kim. Now, a non-broken guy wasn't even attracted to this dynamic at all. And I, I'm sure I probably came across as motherly or too much like a therapist, but, but the broken ones, OMG, they loved it. They ate it up and it worked, it, it, I mean, at least for a while, because I was able to remain guarded, right? Build my confidence up with the role that I knew, and they liked it because I was making them better. In fact, truth be told, after most of my breakups, they went on to have fulfilling and healthy relationships. I kid you not. So I did it. I patched them up, made them shiny, sent them on their way just like new. And it, and it worked because in the end, 
here's the thing. I wasn't really wanting a relationship. I didn't know that at the time. But now that I look back and now that I work with so many people who are in this situation, I realized that I was scared. I was scared of getting hurt again and it not working. So this was so much easier. And I didn't realize it at the time. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? So how did I get over that fixer addiction, right? It took work. And it's much of the work that I have my clients do, right? It was express- expressing my feelings, not giving my power away, and demanding way more for myself so that I could attract something different. So breaking bad dating habits is crucial if you are trying to attract something different. It's important to know what those are. So look at your dating patterns. What are they? What isn't working? And usually it's because there is a bad habit you have fallen into and you may not even realize it. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Kim, like I don't have bad habits. Like you can't say that for everybody. It's just that I haven't found the right guy or a right girl for me. But then I'm going to ask you to ask yourself, what are you doing that is not allowing you to find that right person in your life? The fact that you don't see you as your own common denominator is your bad habit. It is your bad habit. So if you're sick of not getting results in your life, then it's time to break these nasty dating habits. And I want to go over the top five bad dating habits and addictions that I see most commonly played out. And it prevents people from finding love. All right. The first one is what I call the swiping addiction. You know it. You've seen it. You've probably been through it. (laughs) It's numbing out on these apps. And it's just kind of, you know, all you're doing is relying on online dating, virtual dating, whether it's, you know, the sites or the apps. But you just are kind of scrolling through and looking at these pictures, but you're not really cultivating any connections or meeting people offline. Um, I recently actually worked with a client and she was doing exactly that. And and she said to me, well, you know, Kim, first of all, there are no, there are no great guys out and about. Like I don't see them anywhere. So the only way I can really control all of this is that I can see these guys online. It's like a, you know, it's a pool that I can have control over. I said, well, how many of these guys online are you actually meeting and there was this long pause and she said, well, I don't know, maybe maybe 5% of them. I said, well, that's not very high. And so and then when she would go out on these dates, she said it was like she was numbing out. She wasn't even like connecting with these guys because there would be like one or two red flags in her mind and she would be checked out. She's like, ah, not for me, not for me. So this is a bad habit. This is a really bad habit that I think a lot of people in this day and age have fallen into. So what do you do about it? Here's the solution. Diversify your dating portfolio. You hear me say this over and over again, and I'm going to drill it in till the cows come home. <laughs> your dating portfolio should look like your financial portfolio. You need to diversify as much as possible. You can't just rely on one thing because then you're not exercising your social muscle. You're not exercising your flirting muscle. Get rid of the lists that come, you know, with you on these dates and really work on being more open. Come from a place of curiosity. Instead of going out on these dates and putting so much pressure on yourself or just honing in on these virtual dates, think of it as networking and build strong connections with people because that's when the magic happens. This is what I teach my clients and this is how they get the results. So that's that's the number one habit that I see play out. Okay, number two bad habit is what I call the crumb syndrome. You know, you keep trying to turn the crumbs into cake and like it's this endless trail that the crumbs lead you to, hoping that at the end of the trail, you're going to see this like ginormous cake. But in the end, 
it's like you're spinning your way, like you're going around around in a circle still with the crumbs. It never turns into the cake. I call these people intermittent reinforcers. They leave you just enough to stay in it. So you continue down that path, hoping it'll turn into something. And then you spend endless energy and time and angst over whether or not they're going to give you more. I you know, had a client recently struggle with this and she was trying to get rid of this guy who was an intermittent reinforcer. And she kept saying, Kim, but I think, I think he's going to turn a corner. I think he's going to, you know, I think he's just going through a bad period. So I, I just, I, I just want to wait. And I said, well, that's fine. You can wait, but how long are you willing to wait for? And mind you, she had been at this for a year already. <laughs> You know, I said, how much more time do you want to waste? I said, until you get rid of this guy, until you sweep the crumbs away and you actually demand the cake right away, you are, you're spinning your wheels. You're going to continue down this very lonely path. And she finally realized after, you know, some time went by that I was right and she got rid of him. And of course, lo and behold, really, really great guys came into her life who actually served her the cake right away. Don't, and so that's the solution. Don't accept the cake. What is it that you want and what do you deserve? Instead of trying to chase what you could hope for or to make it right, what if you demanded it right away for yourself? right? So that's the second bad habit. The third bad habit is you fall into what I fell into, and that is being the fixer, right? You get attracted to being the fixer, the helper, the over caretaker. It's a way of getting validated and not asking for your needs or expressing your feelings. It's, it's a way to keep things actually pretty distant and disconnected. But then as you, you know, go through the relationship, you realize it becomes lopsided because you're not getting your needs met. It, it's not reciprocal, right? So I already told you my example, the fixer. I don't have to go into that. But the solution is what I was saying before, really practicing expressing your feelings, sharing your passions, your likes, your dislikes. Really let the guy or the woman know how you're feeling right from the get-go. Practice setting boundaries. Let these people earn you, earn that side of you, and see how that person shows up for you. If a person isn't showing up for you, then that's not your person, unless you accept that. Okay, so that's the fixer. The fourth bad dating habit I call is getting into the blame game. Now, I see this a lot, right? Like you blame being single on everything outside of yourself. It's the city. It's the town. It's the, you know, the opposite sex. It's your work. It's your age. I mean, the, the list is endless. I've heard it all. And actually, you spend so much time making yourself right that there'll never, ever be anyone good enough for you. And you'll never find anyone because you'll never see anyone. It, it's always everybody else's fault. Um, and I know this to be true because I remember when, um, if any of you have gone to the great love debate. I used to co-host the show with Brian Howie. He has a great podcast out. So definitely want to take a listen to that. But, you know, I used to travel all over and, and he does too. And I would listen to the objections that people had. And no matter what town I was in, everybody stood up and they said, oh, it's the city. It sucks. <laughs> you know, it's, oh, it's the apps. Those apps suck. You know, like, of course they do. Like, you know what? They'll suck if you think they suck. I mean, that's the bottom line. So it's perspective. It's it's how you look at things. So what is what is the solution? If you really want to prove yourself right, go to a different part of town. Get involved in different activities. Shake things up. Are you still not seeing anyone? 
You know, maybe, just maybe, it's something that you're doing. Maybe you're the common denominator on why you're not meeting somebody. So do a self-assessment and kind of do a check and balance for yourself. I I often call this, and I think I've mentioned to you before, you know, when I work with my clients, I say, you know, it, it really is about perspective, approach, and how you look at things. And it's almost as if when you start shifting the way that you look at the world, it's like putting a different pair of glasses on. You're in the same world, but you're looking at it differently. You might see that cute guy in the grocery store where before you said, oh, there's no, there's no cute guys here. Right. And so, you know, prove, prove it to yourself, go to a different place and start looking around and seeing who you see. Are you right? All right. So that's the fourth bad habit. The fifth bad habit is you're the workhorse. You are so busy being busy at work or doing what you're doing or being, you know, mom or going to the PTA or doing all your busyness that you have no time to date. You literally have wrapped up all your time and your whole being into your work. And in fact, that ends up defining you. So you often don't even feel that there's anything else to offer or who like, you know, really your identity more than you, than what you do. So if you do date, you tend to just kind of squeeze it in, in a bumble date after work for 45 minutes. And then you, you know, you're bringing your list with you, of course, on top of it. So it ends up being this like interview thing that never really works. And if they don't meet your requirements, then you don't have time to waste. Like I'm done, you know, and, and then you just, you go back to that. Oh, I'm too busy to, to date people. I saw this all the time when I was a matchmaker, you know, people would come to me and they say, Oh, I'm just so busy to date. I, I, I don't have time to find that person. And here I would have like this ginormous database of people. And even when I would give matches to these people, they, they had the same syndrome, the same habit. They were too busy to even land the date that I would set them up with. So in the end, ask yourself, you know, is the busyness more your fear? Is it the fear of like what I was talking about in the beginning of getting hurt? And so it's easier to dive into work because you feel more confident working rather than carving out time to really get a handle on this part of your life, to really focus on your dating life and your social life. You know, it's easy to shield yourself from that. And kind of like, you know, what I was talking about before being the fixer, like I was more confident being the fixer. I find that a lot of people who kind of put their love life on hold and really focused on their career, guess what? That's how you built your confidence. So fast forward, now that you're finally like able to and ready and have the resources to date, there was this kind of time warp that happened and you don't realize that there's anything else but work because that's where your confidence lives. So what do you do about it? You got to force yourself to carve out time on your calendar and really work on this stuff and realize there's more to you than the busyness. You know, put look in your calendar, just like with your business appointments, Put dating events on there. Put, you know, time to go out with your friends. Treat it just as important as your business meetings and put the active things on your calendar. Okay, so if you were listening to this and you resonate with any of this, you know, I encourage you to kind of write some of these things down and just pick, like I was saying in the beginning, just pick one thing to change, one thing to work on and see if it makes a difference. Okay, I want to read to you a letter that I got. This is obviously, I love this part of the podcast And it just, it was so perfect because it speaks to exactly what we're talking about. See if you can detect the bad habits here. This is from Mary. And she said, hi, Kim, I work a lot, a lot of long hours, and I want to find someone equally as busy. (laughs) 
She wants to find someone equally as busy. And when we're together, then it's all enjoyable. I am older and do not want our time together to be all about his past relationships and his kids, etc. I as well am divorced and I have grown children that are self-sufficient and live in another state. So I am looking for a partner, not a project. I want a bright man, someone mentally stimulating, and that has been challenging to find thus far, to find my match. It seems like most men are game players and I have and have a lot of baggage, Mary. Oh, Mary, Mary, Mary. I feel your frustration. I really do. And it seems like you are having a hard time finding someone who you feel is your equal. But here's the thing. I detect some bad dating habits. (laughs) Definitely, they were kind of screaming out. I don't know if you all heard that. It seems like you might be falling into both the workhorse syndrome and the blame game for reasons that you are not finding love. And I also hear that there's a little double talking happening. It's that, you know, you're so busy working, but how are you supposed to find someone who is equally as busy if you're so busy? And if he's busy, right? Furthermore, saying that all men are game players and have baggage might be true given the fact who you are and how you're going about dating, right? You're probably meeting those guys. So what piece is yours? What piece is yours that you keep meeting these men? The truth is, is that if you actually take a hard look at what you want, a really hard look at what you want, is it the relationship that you want? Then you need to carve out time to seek that. And it may not be with somebody equally as busy unless you are trying to attract a detached relationship. And what I mean by that is that there is no way that two busy people can get any kind of traction in a deeper level, a deeper intimate relationship. So in essence, your unavailability, your detachment is attracting other unavailable and detached people who you are defining as having baggage and game players. You see the cycle? So the first step is to really look at what you want right? Really take a hard look. If you're just looking for something light and detached, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you're really ready for that deeper, intimate relationship, you got to carve out time. Second, start tracking your time and assessing how much are you spending time? Like, what are you spending your hours doing? I, I want to know, like you said that in the, in the beginning, a lot of long hours. What, what is that? Can you cut back and carve out time for your social and dating life? And number three, are you able to shake off your workhorse self and be in your light, fun, and receiving mode while dating? Or are you dating like you are in a boardroom? That is my biggest question to you. So it's it's really important to have a date prep plan, especially if you are so busy and you're in that kind of corporate mode. You have to do that so that you can be more in your feminine and see if it makes a difference in who you're attracting and how you are dating. Dance, put a dress on, drink some bubbly, I don't care. (laughs) Walk around in heels. So if you are fed up like Mary and not getting the results or the partner you want, it is time to break these nasty, bad dating habits and addiction. It is your right. It's your right to have the love and relationship you deserve. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me today. And this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And make sure you go to my site, seltzerstyle.com. If you are listening to this and you want to break your bad dating habits and addictions, sign up for a free breakthrough call with me. And I will help you crack the code like I've done with so many others. And it's free. It's only 30 minutes. And what if, what if that 30 minutes changed the entire course of your life as you know it? So click the link you see here in the show description and stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day. 